Like of the railroad, I made it run, made it race against time. One side of the railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower up to the sun, brick and rivet and lime. Once I built a tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? <clears throat> yes? Who is it? Uh, Miss Drake. I can't see anyone. You have to have an appointment. I happen to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> I can't see anyone without an appointment. I'm an actor. Well, that's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just have a minute of your time... Uh, a minute. I may just give you a minute's worth of truth that could be very painful. This is just the day for it. Huh. But I've, I've got to talk to you. I mean, this is my last chance. Ah, oh, let's get something straight. I'm nobody's last chance. But you're an agent. I mean, you could help me. You think so? Does this look like I'm in Sardis? <laughs> I was just wondering if there were any replacements coming up in any shows anywhere, uptown. Look, have you been in here before? No. I spoke to you once, for a moment. My name is Sam Lawson. Well said. Let me tell you something. In this year of our Lord, 1933, there are exactly 11 attractions open for business in New York City. Only three of them are making any money. Two of them have casts of less than nine, and one is a musical. Can you sing? Can you dance? Uh, I'm an actor, Miss Drake. <laughs> it's no loss. There's nobody is foolish enough to leave a hit show in December. What about the plays? There's only one part in either one of them that you might possibly be right for with a farthest stretch of the imagination. What's that? What Dickie Gerald does in Dark Way. Uh, is he leaving? <laughs> Dickie Gerald's been on this street for ten years. He has more sense than to leave a hit show. And if he should leave, there are twenty juveniles who've done big parts. Big parts would be on the producer's doorstep one moment after it was announced. Now, have you any idea what I can do for you? Is he leaving? Oh my God, you're an actor all right. But with the others, it might not be right for the part. If he should leave, some of those juveniles are my clients. But I am going to help you. <laughs> oh, Miss Drake! Go home. I can't. Why not? I'm going to be a star someday. It's impossible. People become stars. People escape from sunken submarines, too. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just have to take that chance. Oh, my God. Isn't the handwriting on the wall? I haven't got my footing yet. I mean, like with you. I wrote you and called you, but I was never able to see you till today. Well, now you've seen me. Don't you see what exists? What makes you think anyone would pay three dollars and thirty cents to see you? <laughs> yeah. They don't look like Eric Peters. Exactly. But I can act. Hmm. Ha! They wouldn't pay fifty-five cents to see you at the actor's rostrum. I know. I know. Well, how did you know that we charge fifty-five cents at the actor's rostrum? I saw you. You, you, you did? Well, uh, how, uh... How were you? Yeah. <laughs> you were good. You lack experience, of course, but you have talent. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you have talent or not. That's not the point. I had, believe it or not, a great deal of talent. In the seasons 21 to 24, I was out of work four and a half weeks. Good parts and good shows. It was before the Depression, of course. 
but good times. Then, 24 to 26, I didn't work at all. Not one week. But I stayed on the fringes of the only thing I knew anything about at all, the precious theater. And what have I got now? This and Florence and Agnes. Florence is my mother. She can't stand me and I can't stand her. Agnes is my mother's cat. She hates me and I hate her. It's really not very much, is it? Just a little bit better than nothing. <laughs> Miss Drake, I beg you. If I could help you, it would only be a reprieve. Oh, can you? Oh, don't be so full of hope. I say, if I could. And the final ending to the story would be the same anyway. No, no, it won't. You saw Kensington? They're all cast. They go into rehearsal next Monday. They need an assistant stage manager who can also understudy. Kensington owes me a favor. Oh, Miss Drew! I shouldn't waste a favor like this, but go on. You'll be at the theater. I'll call him. I can't guarantee it. Well, go on! I knew there was a job. I knew you did. You could almost smell it, couldn't you? <sighs> yeah, that's what you need. Send him in. Hello, Shirley. <laughs> well, I've been having a time finding you. Where have you been hiding? I couldn't get you at the last number you gave me a few months ago. <laughs> Shirley, I haven't seen you in years. That's why I was so surprised when I stopped by the old apartment and saw a message from you. Uh-oh. <laughs> How's, uh... Agnes. Oh, she died a year and a half ago. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Agnes was the cat. Florence was my mother. Oh. <laughs> That's better. How's she? Oh, about the same. Got a new cat, Constance. Constance hates me worse than Agnes did. So everything's just about the same. Yeah. Where have you been? Uh, last thing I was on the road with party favor. You were? I was with her for a year and a half. Oh. You were that out-of-town, one-night stand tour. Yeah, and I saw America. How time flies. How was the tour? It was good, I... Oh, well, it doesn't matter now. It's over. <laughs> Tell you what I wanted to talk to you about. <clears throat> Kensington is doing another show. You've worked for him once, didn't you? Uh, assistant stage manager and understudied four parts. You got me the job, remember? <laughs> I closed out of town during the tryout in 1933. Seven years ago. I thought that was the show. Well, what put two and two together, Maurice Novak is coming back from California to direct. There's a part in it. The man we you'd be just right for it. Maury Novak. Didn't you work with him in a group down in the village that he used to direct or something? Uh, the, the actor's rostrum. <laughs> Maury just, Novak. Just had a hunch. <laughs> Old friends and all that, haha. Huh? It never hurts. <laughs> It'd be great. But don't get your hopes up. You may have a lot of California people in mind for it, but you will get to see him. He was a famous trumpet man from all Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was a top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now. I'm blowing reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B.